Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ramen Otaku Show. Today we're going to be reviewing the Gundam Build series, which includes Gundam Build Fighters and Try, as well as its spiritual sequel, Gundam Build Divers and Rerise. The other ones aren't included because it's not on Crunchyroll, but I may consider doing a review of them somewhere near the future. Now this review is going to be a bit different from the previous ones, as I'm splitting them into three sections. There's my experience with Gundam, the review, and a very dumb what if as a bonus. Hey guys, this is Post Marcus here. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I actually had to cut out the bonus content just because I wanted to get this review over with. If you're curious about what that extra bonus content was going to be, I'm going to release that part of the script on my Deviant Art page, so be sure to check that out. Again, I'm really sorry, but you know, that's just what happens when you're crunching for time. Alright, back to the review. Anyways, let's begin. So first off, my history with Gundam. I have very little experience of this series. The most I can remember is watching G Gundam as a kid back when it aired on Toonami. Which, by the way, there are some references to that, as well as a bunch of others, that I'm sure a more hardcore fan would be able to pick up more than me. And I may consider doing a review of G Gundam somewhere in the future, since I never got around to finishing it. Now with all that being said, what about the plastic model kits? The reason I got obsessed with this was because when I was developing Rising Ramen Heroes, I needed reference material, like posable figures, which is what led me to building these model kits. One thing led to another, I immediately got addicted to this. There's just something so satisfying about cutting the pieces out, sanding out the surface, attaching the pieces together, and placing the decal stickers on to create a finished masterpiece. And that's what Gundam Build is able to illustrate. Most of the time. So yeah, that's what led me to watching the Gundam Build series. Okay, so what's the story here? Sei Iori is a very passionate Gunpla builder who wants to enter the N1 Grand Prix, but can't because he sucks at piloting. But after meeting a mysterious boy named Reiji, who's really good in combat, the two become the ultimate duo in Gunpla battle. And over the course of the story, despite their different personalities, they're able to learn from each other and grow as characters. So those are our stars, but what about the other highlight characters? First, there's Cure Papaya. I mean, China. And yes, that's how you pronounce her name. I know how to read Japanese. Shut up! She is an absolute sweetheart, especially with her relationship with Sei. And her battle against Caroline in Episode 9 was pretty sweet, if not pretty funny. Especially when she put cotton inside her Gundam. I know it's a teddy bear, but still, it surprises me. That's a pretty difficult task to do, but maybe I'm overthinking it. And then there's Ayaka, I mean Ayla, who may in fact be the most emotional character within the entire season. She is an orphan turned into a lab rat to win the Gunpla tournament, but after encountering Reiji, she started to show more emotion and would eventually break free from the shackles of torture. And look, even if the way she broke free may turn you off, it was still pretty funny and awesome. Yeah, you fucking tell her, girl! While Reiji and Ayla's relationship may be typical tsundere tropes, it is a nice contrast to Sei and Sheena's sweet and wholesome relationship. I just wish that Ayla had a figure right standard model kit like Sheena. Why can't we have nice things, Bandai? I would have bought that kit in a heartbeat. And then there's Mr. Rao, who's been the most enjoyable character in this season. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Marcus, he's about as ugly as a fake guy, Baku! Well, I disagree. He has a lot of personality and is a really good mentor figure for our heroes. He may be no Rosemary, but he still made the series that much more enjoyable for me. So that's it for the characters I love. The contestants in the tournament and other characters were just fine or whatever. And that is freaking Chi! Okay, look, I know this anime came out in 2013, but I want you to look at her and tell me with a straight face that she doesn't look like Chiyu from Healing Good Precure. She even runs a family inn. All she needs to do now is compete in the high jump. And look, this isn't the worst thing I've done in a review or any entertainment discussion. The worst thing I've done is call the robot from Interstellar, Stickman. Super Fighting Robot! Stickman! Super Fighting Robot! Okay, back on topic. I think the worst character in this season is Tatsuya Yuki. 
or as he prefers to be called, Meiji Kawaguchi. Who is worse than Enza and Blues? He's the pretty student council president that gives Reiji a reason to gunpla battle, until later he just leaves to take on the name Meiji. And throughout the entire season, I legit did not give any shits about him. Even when he tries to be cool. Rick and John of the D-Pad whine and bitch about Enza and Blues being the lamest characters ever, and yet somehow I managed to find a character who's worse than them. You don't sound like Rattles Taggy before. Shut up, uh, asshole. Nobody likes you. Uh, fucking. All right, Cool Shades. Let's. Uh, uh, fuck it. I'm the best, but I'm not the hero because I do suck. That's that's you, Proto Man, and and Chode. Hit that guy. At least Enza has some pretty deep human moments, especially with his relationship with his father. Such a great father. <laughs> Daddy issues, am I right? He also has some pretty amusing moments in the manga, especially with his relationship with Neto, as he not only bickers, but also pushes him and Rockman to do better and work together as a team. Part of what made Blue such a cool character was how he was not only confident, but also serious with a tragic backstory. And Meiji here doesn't have any of that. So next time someone complains about Enza and Blues, I'm gonna point them to this fucker because he's a bad example of a cool character. Overall, this series was pretty good. It's not perfect, but definitely not a massive waste of my time. There might be some clumsy writing, but as a first, it's pretty good. And now for the next season, Gundam Build Fighters Try, which takes place several years after the first season. And honestly, it's fantastic. The characters are much better, since the focus is around a trio team rather than one or two fighters. First, there's Fumina Hoshino, who is the best female lead, both design and writing-wise. And the best part is that the series hints that she has feelings for our main lead, Sekai, but doesn't know how to express it. In fact, she probably doesn't even know that she has feelings for Sekai. Which leads us to her rival, Sucrose. I mean, Shia Kojima. This cutie has the hots for Sekai, which causes Fumina to be extremely jealous. And again, she doesn't know how to express her feelings towards Sekai, even towards the end of the series. お、先輩。知らない人に勝手にガンプラを触らせ誰世界。うわ、呼び捨て。俺の先輩だよ。確かにそうだけど、他にもっといい方が。もしかして彼女？な、な、な、な、な、何よ。そんなんじゃないって。
So my friend Subi told me it wasn't that good, even though he really loves Ayame. And I was like, I'll be the judge of that. So, is it a shooting star rock man, or just a mighty number nine that's misunderstood by millions? Well, to be honest, I think it's better to refer to this as the Battle Network of the Build series. No, legit. This series takes place between a real and a virtual world. And along with the competitive battles, there are two arcs that mainly focus on saving the world with some redemption moments. The only problem I have is some of the character designs, particularly the furry and fantasy elements. I get that it's a virtual world, but after seeing so many goddamn isekai anime series like Konosuba, it's just really tiring. And I feel like that's what they did, and then tried to experiment with too many ideas so it could be seen as the most creative series than the previous one. But in reality, it just doesn't really feel all that well thought out. Nevertheless, it's not a major pain in the anus. But the absolute best part of this series are the two female characters. First, there's Kaching. I mean Sarah. And my god, she is an absolute sweetheart. She is an electronic life form, or in Battle Network terms, a solo net navvy, born from the love of Gunpla. After meeting Riku, she becomes an integral part of the main force. And in the second arc, where her origins are revealed, it was so emotional that I really wanted to save her. Since she's an electronic life form, she unfortunately poses a risk as she was taking up too much memory, which could cause the virtual world of GBN to crash. I really love these moments that focus on natural and artificial, which is what makes Rockman's focus on the relationship between humans and robots so great. And then there's Aya Fujisawa, aka Ayame. Everything from her design to her origins was so well crafted, especially with her secret love for cute stuff. <laughs> Overall, I absolutely enjoyed this series way more than the previous ones, because of how they had more of a focus on saving the world rather than solely being about competitive battles. Build Fighters sorta had that, but it felt like it was trying to juggle too many things at once, while Try had none of that, even though it wasn't a big deal. Build Divers is pretty much Battle Network, albeit with some fantasy elements that I don't really think needs to be here, but didn't really ruin the entire experience. Now, I want everyone to go tell Subi on Twitter how much of a weeb he is, how awesome Gundam Build Divers is, and that he should go watch more anime and play Mega Man Battle Network. Okay, I'm obviously joking, but I really do think Subi needs to open his mind and heart a little more. There is more to life than just Western cartoons. And finally, it's sequel season Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. This season takes place two years after the first season and it has a much more serious tone than the previous one. And no, that does not mean I hate it. I am fully aware that the main Gundam series is supposed to be serious. Heck, G Gundam is a perfect example of that. And speaking of G Gundam, there's our main character, Hiroto Kuga, who is basically Domon but less aggressive. And then there's Mei, who, believe it or not, is Sarah's younger sister, and is extremely capable in combat. These two are my favorite characters within the story because of how they're characterized and a nice change of pace from the previous leads. Oh, and I can't forget about Venti, I mean Eve, who legitimately is Iris. No, I'm not even kidding. She is Iris, both Reploid and Solo Nat Navi. But I think I'm gonna stop here to prevent any spoilers. Anyways, as for the others, which are Kazumi and Par, I really didn't care much about them because they just weren't that appealing which resulted in them being overshadowed by Hiroto and Mei, even when they had moments of growth. But that's not the worst part of this series. What made this series unenjoyable for me was that they doubled down on the furries. Our four main heroes are tasked with saving another world that's inhabited by furries from some corrupted AI. You're gonna see a lot of these furries throughout the story, and as someone who doesn't care about furry culture, they essentially made the entire experience more of a drag than being memorable. It's not the serious story or the less cool characters. It's the anthropomorphic animals that ruined my enjoyment. I get that it's to make these inhabitants more unique, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna like it. The only episodes I actually enjoyed are 24 and 26, since the cast from the previous season makes a full appearance, but everything else was either mediocre to boring. And the worst episode out of this entire season is episode 14, because it's pretty much just focus on the furries. 
Overall, I didn't enjoy this series as much as the previous one. The weird pacing, writing, and furry designs made it difficult for me to continue, and as a result, I don't really feel any reason to go back and rewatch it for fun. Hopefully, the next anime series will be better and not make the same mistakes. And speaking of the next anime series, let's talk about my first impressions of Gundam Build Metaverse. So this will be celebrating the Build series' 10th anniversary. So what do I think? Well, let's start with our main character, Ryo Hojo, who is basically me, but really good looking. Hopefully he's a talented manga artist and has a YouTube channel. Legit, his bio says that the series will take place in Hawaii. Gee, I wonder why that is! But if I'm gonna be completely blunt and obviously honest here, I absolutely love this, especially since there isn't a lot of Hawaiian representation when it comes to Japanese anime. And then there's Surya, who I think it's pretty obvious that she's the masked lady, since her bio states that there are rumors that she used to be a famous builder. Nevertheless, she's pretty attractive, and I do hope that we get a figure rice standard model kit of her. Please Bandai, please do it! And finally, in the story summary, it says after completing his own Gunpla, the Law Gundam, Ryo happens to encounter some past champions of Gunpla battle in the Metaverse realm. And being that this is an anniversary series, it likely means that we'll see the main characters of Build Fighter, Try, Build Divers, and Re-Rise in battle. What worries me about this series is that there's apparently only gonna be three episodes, which seems like a massive step down from the previous ones, which usually has about like 25 to 26 episodes. However, they did say that this is supposed to be part of a bigger project, so hopefully we'll see more of Ryu beyond the metaverse. So there you go, that's my entire review of the Gundam Build series. I honestly think that Build Fighters Try and Build Divers are the best ones to watch, with Re-Rise unfortunately being not that appealing. But hey, that's just my opinion. So, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I shall see you all next time on the Ramen Otaku Show. Now if you'll excuse me, I got more plastic model kits to work on. Uh, somewhere. Hopefully.